Hi, everyone. Wouldn't we all want to predict the future? Well, we used to be a bit better at this, but today our environment is more unpredictable than it has ever been before. Let's take a bigger view and look at the system that we're all part of. This may help us feel a bit more confident when we're facing this uncertainty. My name is Katarina Segerstahl, and I will be your guide today on a translated tour of evolutionary dynamics for strategy. Who recognizes this little fellow? Although we're all hyped about robotics and AI, this is not a robot in overalls. It's actually a living organism about one millimeter in size. And it is one of the most fantastic survivors in the history of evolution. It actually has a unique ability to adapt DNA from other living organisms, and this makes it super transformative. Now, evolution is essentially about the study of living systems. The history of evolution describes the phases where living systems have taken significantly new form, from RNA to DNA, from single cells to multicellularity, from neural networks to digital networks. We're currently living in one of these meta-transitions, and this is why things are, again, changing at an accelerating pace. So change and speed is completely normal if we look at evolutionary transitions. Our current transition is called the biodigital fusion, where biological and digital systems merge. This also challenges us to redefine what we mean by living systems. Just like bacteria, the tardigrade, reptiles and animals like us, companies and organizations are also living systems. So in order to understand how living systems behave in our current unpredictable environment, let's take a look at some key principles that apply to all living organisms. The growth, synergy, transformation, and the principle of natural selection. Every living organism constantly balances between two priorities, either to grow or to survive. And the selection, of the selection of the strategy or priority depends on what the environment is like. Every living organism also has an inherent tendency to join other integrated organisms. We all want to get together, right? All living organisms or living systems also constantly transform, change shape. Some do this slowly, some do this quickly. Some are more successful than others. Success is essentially determined by the principle of natural selection. In other words, survival of the fittest. However, fitness is always determined by the environment. Now, when the environment is stable and more predictable, it's easy to overlook. But right now, when the environment is highly unpredictable, we need to take a careful look at how we need to change our strategies in it. Now that we have some basic understanding about the principles of living systems, let's move on to the next level, the evolutionary dynamics. The evolutionary dynamics is an environmental framework for us to understand how living organisms, companies and organizations, as well as animals, behave in different types of environments. We're roughly looking at two things. First, the predictability of the environment, whether it's low or high, and the complexity of organizations. We're always having different types of organis organisms in this space, simpler ones and more complex ones. This is a biological framework but we will now take a look at how industries and companies behave in it. Very exciting. I want to begin with the forest industry because I'm personally really excited about it. It has a connection to my family and, and, and the Finnish economy. Uh, and I think it's a great example of an industry that during the past decades was growing uh, aggressively based on consolidation and optimization, but that was when the environment was a bit more predictable. 
But when paper turned digital, the environment dramatically changed and became more unpredictable for this established industry. Now, what the forest companies have been doing, meanwhile, they have been heavily renewing their machinery and processes, and today they're reborn and coming out with total new value for the changed market, biodegradable materials and renewable biofuel. I think it's a very inspiring example. Another industry that is currently renewing heavily uh, in, in these uncertain times is the IT industry and technology. There are a lot of established companies and organizations that were growing in the more stabilized era that now seriously need to uh, restructure their capabilities and skills. And what they're doing is that they're more and more collaborating with smaller, simpler organisms that are more fit with the current environment. My background personally is in design thinking and design. And one of the greatest disruptors of the IT industry is actually human behavior and consumer behavior. And that's why companies and agencies that are specialized in this are currently highly fit for the current environment. What the large companies are doing, we're seeing a lot of M&A activity in this space. Large uh, IT companies are acquiring strategy and design companies uh, to renew their capabilities and competencies. They're actually doing the same thing that the tardigrade does. They're adapting DNA from smaller organisms that are better fit with the current environment. Very smart. Of course, the financial industry is another one that's very complex and established and has a huge opportunity to learn from what's happening in this lower left quadrant, which I call uh, the quadrant of emergent life. When things are highly unstable, it's very fruitful ground for new things to be born and emerged. Life itself was originally born in highly unstable circumstances. And there are lots of opportunities in this space that the larger ones can utilize. Now, finally, one of the most exciting industries that we have bubbling in this space, this emerging life quadrant, is the health industry, which is actually the epicenter of the bio-digital fusion. Now, I'm really looking forward to also a new industry being born uh, as a combination of health and technology. We're already integrating sensors to ourselves and biohacking and creating nanobots for pharma. So it only remains to be seen what's next. What's curious, though, that there are many different types of companies and also very established and highly complex ones in this space. And many of those are still relying on the strategy of consolidation and optimization, which is quite fine when things are predictable, but now the environment is highly predictable, un unpredictable. What remains to be seen is how well these two uh, can benefit from each other in the future. So when things are predictable, it's fine to optimize and consolidate, but when predictability falls, uh, complex organizations actually have to prioritize renewing themselves and not necessarily destructing, but modularizing what they're doing. Modular modularizing means that you start doing multiple different things as, as part of your process and, and not just one. And when the environment is highly unpredictable, this is usually when simple organisms thrive. And this is because they are super efficient in renewing themselves and reinventing themselves over and over. Take, for example, a serial entrepreneur who can come up with multiple business ideas for the market uh, and, and succeed as long as he or she doesn't give up. And finally, when the environment even momentarily stabilizes, just like with the design agency and the space agencies and the space becomes a bit populated, these organisms can greatly benefit from mutual collaborations uh, with the other organisms that have more energy. In evolution, there are three main success strategies, resilience, adaptability, and transformability. And it appears that now, when the environment is highly unpredictable, transformability is the key, the ultimate survival strategy. So how can we become ultimately transformable? Both complex and simple organizations can actually be highly transformable. Uh, if you're a complex organization or organism, uh, one way to achieve transformability is to move from being monolithic to modular. 
So doing multiple different things in order to mitigate the risk of change. For example, Tesla is making roof tiles, uh, automobiles, and space technology. And Amer Sports has a highly modular brand portfolio, which enabled it to convert from tobacco industry to health. And if you're simple, you don't have to become complex in order to grow. Today's digital networks are enabling even simple organizations and structures to grow through networks. Now to sum up, here's a beautiful example of an extremely complex and dynamic modular living organism that can take infinite amount of shapes in real time as the environment and the landscape changes around it as they fly. This is ultimate transformability. Thank you.